Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you all. Um, as a Chinese, I really thank you guys for um, what you said about China. And of course, as a journalist, I spent a lot of time traveling across China, visiting people of different ethnic groups, trying to let more people know about their culture, understand their customs. And um, I think when talking about Chinese nation, it's actually a very broad concept because, because that refers to 56 different ethnic groups living in China for thousands of years. Among the 56, the majority is the Han Chinese, like I am, I'm a Han Chinese, uh, that make up the 90% of the population in China. And the other 55 different ethnic groups make up the, uh, the rest 10%. That's why because of the number of populations, we call the 55 as ethnic minority groups. So I think not many people all of outside of China actually realize there are so many different ethnicities living in China until very recently some government some media trying to create a racial conflict in China like uh, the the talk about those Uyghur issues or in Xinjiang or Tibetan issues until recently they suddenly care about a certain group of ethnic groups in China so and I noticed there are some narratives that these people tend to push push were basically saying those ethnic groups culture and language are being wiped out their mosques their temples are being destroyed or uh, those people are being used as forced labor and i think those people who are fabricating those fictions uh, either don't understand chinese or don't bother to dig out in the chinese world because that basically legally impossible to do in China because there were so many laws, so many uh, so many policies actually to protect and promote different ethnic groups culture. And here I would like to share with you some China's real policies towards those uh, different ethnic groups, but especially to towards the minorities. And for you, first, I would like to start with the constitution. Actually, anyone can look it up. The four, article four of the constitution specifically says all races in China are created equal, of course, and eth every ethnic group's rights, illegal rights and benefits are protected by the law. And actually any racism uh, or oppression against any ethnic group is prohibited. And any activities trying to separate all those eth ethnic groups are prohibited. And also um, it's the government's responsibility to develop their economy and the cultural of different ethnic groups based on their characteristics and their needs. And, it's, and there's another rule that is very important in China is actually the, this uh, regional autonomy. Uh, for example, the place I'm, I'm staying right now is called Guangxi Zhuang ethnic, um, autonomy, Zhuang autonomy region because the majority is the Zhuang ethnic group. And Xinjiang, many people heard about Xinjiang but the full name of Xinjiang is actually Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. So actually in China, different ethnic groups, uh, they have this autonomy in their region. And there were three levels of autonomy. Uh, autonomy region is like provincial level. And under this provincial level, there are also pre uh, autonomy prefecture, autonomy county, and actually autonomy villages that give those people rights to govern themselves based on their traditions, their cultures. So, and also it comes to the second law is actually called this uh, regional autonomy law. And there were so many things listed very specifically how to protect their culture, how to boost their language and how to protect their religious freedom. So, and I can list just three, point out of three, for example, the, uh, article 21st, it says, um, it tells all the government officials that they have to use their region's uh, ethnic group's language to to work with the local people and in some language in some region there were the prevalent language there are several prevalent languages because different ethnic groups live in one region for example xinjiang province people only know about Uyghur people living in xinjiang but actually in xinjiang there were 55 ethnic groups living in xinjiang Remember, there were 56 ethnic groups of all China. Among all Chinese, there were 56 ethnic groups, but just in Xinjiang, there are 55. But the Uyghurs are the majority of the minorities, so they govern that region. And of course, um, 
many people the among the national language Mandarin that I tend to speak. Uh, also, there are the Uyghur language is also a prevalent language. So the local government officials actually are able to speak several different languages. Um, that's the original law, and also um, in the second, in the twenty second article of this original autonomy law, it also specifically listed that the government local of government should give a priority to hire people of men, ethnic minorities, and especially to hire women and children of ethnic minorities, and to provide training skills, to, uh, no matter it's science or any skills for ethnic minorities, to make sure they have, they have more opportunities to work on different levels. And also there's another lie that uh, ten pe those people who try to create, create racial war in China, they tend to say they're, all the languages are being wiped out. Well, of course, if you come to China, if you actually go to Xinjiang or Tibet or in the Mongolia, you will immediately realize those are, <laughs> those are false because there are uh, signs, road signs of their language. Everybody is talking their own languages. It's so easy to debunk their lies. But also, if you take a look at the law, the education law, it specifically says in all schools, especially in this region, uh, autonomy regions, it's mandatory to teach at least two languages. One is the national language, Mandarin, and the other language is basically on which ethnic, ethnic group is the majority there. I remember in September, I visited Tibet um, because so many people are saying Tibetan language no longer, no longer exist. So actually, I visited one of the local schools in the county. Um, almost all the students at that school is Tibetan kids. Uh, some, because it's a small county in the middle of a quite a remote area. But sometimes there were students of other ethnic groups. But uh, not only they all uh, speak Tibetan at home or to each other, there are also Tibetan class teach them how to, to make great literature, to write poems in Tibetan class, in uh, this Tibetan class. So it's mandatory. And even if the students are Han Chinese or of other ethnic groups, they have to take this Tibetan class. It's mandatory for everyone. So these are the basic laws to promote the different languages and cultures of ethnic groups. Ethnic groups. Now also just last month, I visited the Yunnan province, another re region with so many diverse ethnic groups. And there's a one group is called a Bai ethnic group. And their language is, they only have spoken language. They don't have words. So even with such a language that have no words, they're still able to pass this language from generations to generations. And they speak, they speak that language in the, at their school, at home. And um, there's some, um, I actually, I talked to one of the locals. Uh, okay, so, so because there were also other lang uh, ethnic groups living in that region, like E minority and the Li Su minority. So how do they communicate with the Bai who makes up the majority? Actually, other ethnic groups also learn Bai language in, be, in order to be able to communi communicate with the majority of the people. So in those regions, regardless of your ethnic groups, they are really uh, learning each other's language. And in this Chinese law, in this original autonomy law, uh, there's one article specifically listed that they're encouraging our government officials to learn each other's languages, no matter uh, what a race you are, learn each other's language. And those who are able to speak at least three languages will get a special bonus. So, well, if they really dig out about Chinese law, they will know uh, those uh, people who are trying, really trying to push forward the free Xinjiang, free Tibet, um, their, their narratives it's just so easy to debunk. And also there's another thing. Um, and and I think people tend to say they're really wiping out this population. For example, the, in the past few months, some experts suddenly say that they're sterilizing the Uyghur women and the Uyghur people are really being oppressed. But in fact, the population, there's a number according to the six national demographic census, um, the Uyghur population by 
in 20, 2010, it's 10 million. But in the year 1953, the number was only 3.6 million. So over the past few decades, whale population increased like almost tripled. So I don't know which oppressor in the world will oppress another race by boosting their population. So if you do a little more research, check about this uh, information, you will realize, well, some felt some they didn't really care about to dig out the real figures in China. And also there's one uh, child policy. The time is the time yeah. is running, so uh okay. Up, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, another thing is um, maybe the one also the one child policy actually only applies to Han people. Uh, for example, uh, it's long been disputed, but actually only Han people can uh, use one child policy. People of other ethnic groups can have two or three kids. So all these different ethnic, ethnic minorities, their populations have doubled and tripled over the past few decades. And, uh, and also I, I want to talk about this uh, that they are demolishing the mosques and uh, temples. Actually now in Tibet, there were like 1,700 Tibetan temples and with four, oh, 46,000 um, nuns and monks. And in Tibet, there were the monks, uh, the, uh, sorry, the mosques were about 23,000, 23,000 mosques. I don't know how many mosques are there in the US. Danny, are you about to say something? Sorry, I might like keep, okay. How much time I have left, I'm not sure. Um, so- um, just, wrap up, just wrap up and we'll, uh, we'll head on to the next speaker. Okay, cool. So um, there were so many different ethnic groups living in China, but there were so many laws specifically uh, listed the equality of different ethnic groups and trying to to make sure each culture and uh, each language can be inherited. And also this year, uh, there were so many different ethnic groups being lifted out of poverty. And um, what I really, I think what people keep saying how to create uh, this, uh, how to remove racism, I think is give the opportunity for everyone to get out of poverty, give everyone the chance to live a better life. And this is the most and the most important, the most basic human rights. And that is what's being done in China very well. So anyone for anyone who really curious about what is the risk going on, ethnic groups really is, the situation really is in China. Come here to take a look at China and go to those regions or just take a look at those, uh, dig, dig more, dig more into the just Chinese world. Okay, 